Okay. okay. Hey guys and welcome to Tanashi's Movie Corner and for today's movie review we will be reviewing Star Wars Episode 6 uh, Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Jedi hmm. uh, that came out in 1983 and joining me today is Brad say hi hey everyone yeah uh, so I'm gonna, st- <laughs> I'm gonna start off and uh, I'm gonna try really hard not to go on a tirade so Brad may have to pull me out of it but we're going to start with some of the stuff that I didn't like about the film. And uh, from the beginning, we have the whole Jabba sequence, okay? Uh, as far as the plot is concerned, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. What Luke was thinking, uh, sending, you know, the process of sending everyone in there and why he sent everyone in there the way it did. Uh, you have Luke show up and all of a sudden he's, he's a quote-unquote Jedi master, but we don't get any sense of training. I could forgive that a little bit, but then all of a sudden he does a force choke, which I'm like, the hell? Why is he doing a force choke? Like, this doesn't make any sense to me at all. And some people are like, oh, well, he, he must have learned it having seen Vader do it. Um, no. No, no. There was not There was no learning from Vader. They None of the three ma- main characters were around Vader when he did the force choke. Then he gets thrown down into the Rancor pit, and he wins this fight with this incredible, by the way, design of this creature, very well done. So I'm going to give it that. Quick positive. He beats it with a rock. And that <laughs> that sounded like something else. He throws a rock. He picks up a rock and throws a rock and hits the control panel that makes uh, this gate that's there for some reason fall down and kill this thing. Does it make any sense to you, Bradley? Not in the slightest. Okay. I mean, here he is, a Jedi master um, who, oh, who actually goes against kind of the Jedi way of thinking at the beginning He because he pulls a, a blaster to him to try to kill Jabba when they're surrounded by Jabba's goons and Boba Fett. Quick and way Leia's, to get shot. <laughs> yeah, and Leia's right there. So, so his master plan was to shoot Java. Brilliant. And then he kills the ring car with a rock into a control panel. Not even force lifting the rock. And people were like, well, how would that be any better? At least he would be using the force. At least he would be doing something outside of the realm that ordinary people can do. It would be even better if he could have pulled the the gate down. But anyway, okay, so let's move on to there real quick. Um, I'm going to go straight to you know, the ass uh, hole in the middle of the desert. And one of the things I did like about this asshole <laughs> is that in the special editions, they decide to incorporate this, like, I don't know, this uh, what do you call it, this plant-looking mouth in the middle of it. And people are like, oh, that's that's bullshit. I don't understand why that's there. Uh, hello, it made it look better. It, it improved upon it. Don't hate because it's an addition to it, and you got to hate all additions to it. I'm sorry. It looked much better than it originally had. Uh, but then you have that whole sequence. Yeah, it was all right, I suppose. Wasn't too bad. Oh, wait. Boba Fett got Boba Fetted. That's right. Boba Fett termed that phrase Boba Fetted for the entire Star Wars series now because this bounty hunter who's presented to us as a badass or seems to be a badass from episode 5 gets taken out by a blind Han Solo who just accidentally hits his jetpack which sends him right into the side of the ship and has him go down and die. And for the record, he is dead until said otherwise, and it was still stupid. By all accounts, it's stupid. Like, I I don't even understand that. 
Then the the whole thing you got this with this a Death Star showing up again because you know we didn't have enough of that and a New Hope. Why not have one with a, a bigger hole in it this time uh, than <laughs> than last time? And you got this whole nonsense uh, with the Ewoks. Okay, these stupid furry creatures that supposedly can take down the elite stormtroopers. The elite. Now, up until this point, we have said our bit about the Stormtroopers and how their aim is terrible. But their aim is actually only terrible when it comes to the main cast of characters. Because, you know, they're the main cast, so you can't hit them, apparently. But they've actually hit Rebels. We've actually seen them shoot Rebels. So to have them not shoot and kill these dumbass little teddy bears with sticks and pebbles makes no sense none no sense whatsoever i don't care what you present me with on this whole notion of oh it's neat it's the nature uh versus our uh technology kind of bit no 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 they are there to be cute and that's all and then you got tonal shifts throughout this entire thing that go from they they go from being this lighthearted over the top stupid but somewhat entertaining battle sequences all of a sudden oh my god an Ewok just died look at it look at the other one look at this teddy bear he's run, he's pushing this other teddy bear back and forth but he's not moving oh my god all of a sudden oh no there's a teddy bear and there's you know there's a Wookiee swinging from the vines or some some nonsense doing a Tarzan reference hey all of a sudden Luke Luke is he's going to the dark side what the hell is oh no wait now we're back to them teddy bears again it just it's it's all over the damn place and the Emperor who apparently had this brilliant idea of, of trapping of, of having everything trapped and having the elite down there on the ground and and everything and yet he's going to be on this incomplete death star which has huge openings to go in and destroy i don't understand that i just don't get it i don't get any of that and the final fight with with luke is like emotional and everything sure but it's not very well done it's not. It's, look at it. It's not a good fight. Come on now, you don't even kid around. <sighs> Luke seriously looks like he's swinging, trying to swing a baseball bat at Darth Vader in this fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's going like in these huge arc, slow ass swings, trying to go down on it. And the thing is, before Luke cuts off Vader's hand, Vader actually just goes down on his own. Seriously, watch the movie again, real closely. You'll see that Vader actually starts kneeling down. When Luke hasn't even, like, struck at him or anything. Luke has swung in a broad swing thing and gotten caught, like, on a rail or something like that. And Vader is going down. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, that's not even everything. I, I could keep going. Um, you Go ahead and uh, take over, please. All right. Happy Don't to. Get closer. So, the thing is, with the Java sequence, it... None of this plan actually makes any sense whatsoever. Nope. Because it's very clear that Luke is willing to use force to rescue his friends. But <laughs> yeah. that begs the question, okay, why would he give the droids over to Jabba? Why would he have his friends infiltrate on this thing but not go in as, say, a group? You know, like, why have Leia go in where she could get compromised or something like that? You know, having Lando go on the inside to get a layout and that kind of thing, that would have made sense, except they didn't really play upon this. Why give R2 his lightsaber if he's just going to force choke the guards anyway to exactly. get to the, where he needs to go? He wouldn't have ever gotten caught if he had his lightsaber. He could have just defeated the Rancor with that, cut his way out, fought his way out. Although, I think that him being, and I think he's actually a Jedi Knight in this movie, him being a Jedi Knight and falling down a trap uh, door is kind of stupid yeah, for right. a Jedi. Uh, I, I, he presents himself as a master. He presents himself as a Jedi master. And in doing so, I expect him to showcase a little bit more than what he did. He showcased a power that even if we hadn't established later on that it's for the dark side or whatever, it's still a power that was has only been used by Vader. 
We've only ever seen it be used by Vader, and just as a power on its own, it seems like it's a darker power, yet he uses it with no indication that he has had any training. In fact, he goes back to Yoda, having not returned since Empire. And and Yoda makes, you know, some statement about how you don't need any more training. His final test, it's to fight Vader. How does that make any sense? That's just... It, yeah, and, uh, that, and that begs a question at the very beginning of this, because from what I've heard, this movie takes place like years after the last one where we ended off. But it's like, okay, if if Luke doesn't go back to Yoda to finish his training, and he obviously didn't save Han until this point, the hell was he doing for years? I, you know, I would I figure know. that saving your friend would be like priority number one. And if you find out that it's like, well, I'm not strong enough to be able to save my friend yet, then go do your damn Jedi training. And then learn all this shit, and then that's why it's like, well, yeah, we had to wait, but now I can do this. But a question I would have posed is, why not ask your rebel friends to help you save Han? Right. I mean, it's not like Han is actually part of the rebellion, and he did kind of save everybody when his interference brought down the Death Star in the fourth movie. Yeah, so, I, I just don't understand how people can be like, oh, well, Luke was a Jedi Master, and he showed Jedi Master moves. Yeah, No, he he did the whole mind bit, right? He did a Force choke, which is un-Jedi-like, and even at even not fully realizing what are Jedi moves and what are Sith moves, uh, which at the time I didn't even think we knew they were Sith. But going with that, we knew the Force choke was a Vader thing, purely a Vader thing. We had seen the the whole lifting and everything and the mind deal done by, by other Jedi. Not the Force choke. It just doesn't seem like it would be a, you know, a Jedi quality, and yet somehow he uses it. But he uses those, and he does a Force pull when he gets the blaster to him. But that's it. Like, he doesn't do much of any Jedi qualities throughout the entire rest of the movie. And I don't understand. Like, if he's supposed to be a Jedi Master, we should have seen a bit more from him. And we don't get that. And that's hugely disappointing, as well as the whole Leia thing, which I will get into in a minute. And the thing about all that, too, is is if he was going to use Force again to do that stuff, he should have had his lightsaber. Trying to pull over the gun, shot. he might have shot Jabba, but then all the goons would have probably just shot him. Plan fails. Having let all his friends get captured, more or less could have had any number of results that he might not have been able to anticipate, which is plan failing. When we're out on this drawbridge to, like, push him into, as you put it, the asshole in the the desert, then it's like, well, I'm waiting for my lightsaber to fall down. Bam. Dead. Any number of ways this plan would have just came crashing down horribly. So this wasn't... So there was no coherent thought whatsoever as to what this plan was going to be and how to prepare for you know, any kind of situation. I'm sorry, but there's just way too much of a logic problem here. And then of course we get off of we get off of uh Tatooine, we talk about um you know, he talks to Yoda, Yoda's saying it's like, Well your training's complete even though you never came back and your training would have been heavily ambiguous by this point. Yeah. Abandon me you did. <laughs> <laughs> but then we got the whole revelation. It's like Oh yeah, Leia is my sister, and Vader is in fact, you know, his father, and you know, right, and having and all this like, stuff, and it's like, yeah, what I told you at the very beginning was true in a very obscure kind of way. Oh yeah, Obi Wan's a jackass, <laughs> like just point blank. Also, the whole uh, Leia. Somehow, I always knew, even when I had my tongue down your throat, I knew it. <laughs> like that. But it, uh, but apparently it's okay if you're siblings. It's, it's okay. I I didn't realize it was okay. Although, but I guess a long one, well to be fair, a long time ago in the galaxy, there were different rules. Now there's a gray area <laughs> for your twin yeah, sister. There's a gray area for your twin sister. Now another problem with this thing though is just like okay, well in episode four, why doesn't Obi Wan tell him they're rescuing his twin sister? Well, we'll get into that. 
Uh, also, thing. it's like if it's suggested in the last movie that there was one other hope, and he says yep. that Leia is the other hope. Yep. But then why not train her to be a Jedi again? That's a whole <laughs> different. We're we're not gonna get into that. <sighs> okay. And then uh, I get the whole thing. I hear that I've heard at least that the whole Ewok thing is is initially meant to be Wookies, and yeah, I heard it was supposed too. to have that difference. The problem is, is like I understand if you're like, well, Wookies would have been an awesome idea, but we just can't do it. Mm-hmm. But then you go with something else. No, go with like teddy bears. Yeah. Teddy bears just kind of, un- just kind of messed up everything. They literally took out the Emperor's elite stormtrooper forces with spears and rocks. Stormtroopers with armor. What is the point in the armor if it can't even keep a spear, a a, a dull spear, mind you, because there's no way these things were, like, that sharp. But regardless, a spear and a rock. If you can get hit by a rock and get taken out when you have armor on, then you really do fail, and I don't understand why you're in the elite. Also, this isn't even just simple failed. This is hardcore fail because this is space age armor, supposedly. You would figure that space age armor wouldn't fall so easily to little rocks because you gotta realize that Ewoks can't actually hold up like big rocks even. They Uh, gotta use little rocks going around. To be fair, I'm not even entirely sure how they die to blasters, but that's a whole nother... At least blasters are more believable. Um, It's like the Empire says, okay... In order to be recruited to fight in our army, your IQ has to be at the like the very bottom of the social. Right. Go go ahead and mention that last little bit too. After the Death Star is destroyed, they made a mention when we have the space battle up in the thing, and the Death Star is like blowing up. There's some of their capital ships or whatever. They're like, you know, we gotta attack the um, Star Destroyers because we gotta get away from the Death Star. Right. Akbar says, "Is like we will not last against those Star Destroyers." And Lando's like, well, we'll last longer against them than we will against the, um, the Death Star. Right. But then, what what happens with this fleet? Even if the Death Star is destroyed, you would figure this fleet would kind of come in and just take the rebels out because they clearly have the numbers and the guns. And then there's also this thing about some random little fighter hits a bridge on that one and the ship goes down. The ship would not oh, go yeah. down over such a small little thing. Even if that was the command deck and it gets blown up, the ship wouldn't just fall out of like its orbit or whatever just over that yeah all right so this is going on for quite a bit already um getting into some of the good points of it i again as ridiculous as the choreography was for the last ending fight the emotional impact of it was there there was a bit back and forth between luke as he appears to be struggling. Oh, I'm going to get into another part of the rant. Oh, okay. But the thing is, like, there was a lot of emotion to it. So it was that. A lot of the stupid moments that are in it are stupid, but they are fun. There is some actual entertainment to it. So it's not really boring like what you, like what I had, at least for A New Hope or even for Phantom Menace. It was entertaining. The actual fight sequences on outside and the space sequences of it uh at the end there were were actually really well done and suspenseful and i actually really like that i thought they did a good job on that um last bit aside but you know there there was definitely entertainment throughout the movie there's funny moments um there's the whole redemption thing which is i think done pretty well yoda passing was uh, it kind of sucked <laughs> as a person watching it because we had gotten to see Yoda from Empire and I really liked him in Empire and to see him now and everything but at least you got some resolution with his character and, and what have you I think Lando did a good job and really stepped up uh, from the last movie so he was a great character to keep going uh, in this one I think the Leia thing was uh, was definitely a missed opportunity but I think Luke, uh, Mark Hamill as an actor at this point had really come into the character so I think that was really cool cool too and I I like the actual celebration sequence of it 
Um, now, I, I don't like the no bit that Vader does. I think the silent uh, just pan back and forth between Vader seeing Luke getting electrocuted and the Emperor doing that, and then Vader lifting up the Emperor is much more impactful than him actually responding no. So that is a special edition change I wish they had kept out. But, for example, the, the, the whole pit thing, you know, with, with the, the creature's mouth or whatever, I'm fine with that. The band, I'm fine with that. I have no problem with the, the band. I have no problem with Ewoks having eyelids or the celebration of the galaxy at the Emperor being destroyed going back to, like, um, Naboo and, and what have you. And I have no problem with Hayden Christensen so showing up in that last sequence instead of that other random guy, okay? I'm sorry for the guy's family, you know, that, that he got taken out, but originally in the movie, Anakin was a lot older. So when he showed up at the end there, you know, he, he was uh, dressed in Jedi robes, but he was an older person, okay? He was... I take it he was the same guy that that, that Vader was. Um, but anyway, because uh, Vader was evil when he died, the whole way that the Force seemed to work, and I actually saw Lucas references after I already figured this out, so, yeah. <laughs> but but the, the way it worked is that the Force Ghost was, it's a representation of Anakin as a Jedi, when he was last a Jedi, not when he last did a good act, when he was last a Jedi, and he was last a Jedi as Hayden Christensen's character, and it makes sense for him to be there as Hayden in Jedi robes than to be a floating partial torso of a man, which would be Vader, and and and, and having an old an old guy in Jedi robes doesn't make any sense at all, so. I like the change. The change fits. Whatever you think about the prequels, they are a continuity, and to keep it continuity, you had to incorporate this. Also, Boba, uh, Boba Fett's voice, it, you know, I don't even know if this really shows up in this one. I can't remember, but Boba Fett's voice being that of Jango Fett, you keep with continuity, it makes sense. So, um, that's some of the good... Obviously, the music's good and everything. I think it was... A, a, I think it was a decent tie-up. I, I think it was. I'm, you know, op, a little optimistic about The Force Awakens, but I'm also a little hesitant about it because we had a relatively good tie-up as far as the main villains and the main focus story getting resolved. So I kind of don't know how I feel about going back into it. But go ahead and say your good parts uh, real quick, and we need to go ahead and get to this rating because we have ranted too long. All right, okay, I, will, I will concur that this was probably the most fun out of the Star Wars movies. At least when I was growing up as a kid, you know, that I think this was the one I liked the best because it was just kind of real fun and it was something that you could just kind of watch. So if you're if you're looking for it for at that perspective, you, you're not really looking at, like, the finer points of the plot or anything of the sort, then you can actually just watch this and have a good time with it. So what's your rating? That being said, my rating is a 5. <laughs> it is an absolute five. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not going to go lower than a five because I'm not going to suggest that this is an actual, uh, like, a, a terrible movie to watch. Yeah. But this is by no means, like, a but, actually. But you're okay. So your mindset is, yeah, I, I don't care. I just don't care. That's, more, <laughs> that's your more whole thing. or less. I, I think this is a movie that worked for me the least out of all of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could do the Yoda voice. Be all like, hmm, crap, you give it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go that low, actually. My least favorite is A New Hope, and A New Hope was a 5.3, I believe, is what I gave it. So I'm going to give, I'm going to actually go 5.5. I'm going to give this a 5.5. I think it had, I know I ranted a lot. There's some decent stuff in it. And I think the decent stuff in it actually really works. And even with the some of the parts that I think are incredibly stupid, they are entertaining, even though they're incredibly stupid. So it's it's kind of frustrating, and yet I'm like, oh, I don't know, I somehow like it too. So I can't really, I can't go go lower. I can't can't go a five. But 
yeah, so that'll wrap this up. Uh, this is the last uh, actual Star Wars movie. We are now done uh, until The Force Awakens. I highly doubt we're going to see it on the 18th when it comes out uh, in December because it's just... Whew. There's <laughs> no way. No, there's way too many people. But we'll probably do another video where we discuss some of the uh, overarching problems and the o overall good things that we did like as a series as a whole. So we'll probably get a little bit more into that. But anyway, so that's what we thought about it. Uh, go ahead and comment below and let me know what you think. Again, I, I really don't hate it. So I just... You know, when you really like a series, I guess, you get kind of, you get passionate about it. And there's so many flaws that I think get overlooked and yet so much hate for the prequels all the time. And I feel like it's unfair because both stories have significant problems with it. But I think overall it's all entertaining. Anyway, so like I said, that'll wrap this up. Uh, please click that like button, share this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, check out my Tis the Season giveaway uh, that I'm doing, uh, with just a few weeks remaining, and uh, may the force be with you.